Hi everyone. It is a pleasure to be here and to, to have the opportunity to present our work uh, towards cross-language interoperability of heterogeneous code. So what I will present today, it is uh, our work in progress in Tornado VM in order to ensure that uh, the generated code that uh, our compiler emits can be uh, portable to different programming languages and uh, runtime systems. Here is an introduction about myself. I'm a researcher at the, at the University of Manchester, and I'm a member of uh, the Tornado VM team. So we live in a world that it is uh, multilingual. In fact, um, there are so many programming languages that uh, dominate the software world. Uh, based on the TOB index, uh, almost uh, 60% and more than 60% of the languages, uh, they, they are covering a wide range from Java, Python, JavaScript, C++, and other programming languages. So this shows that uh, there's a large uh, diversity in the programming. And uh, one work that we have found very inspiring, it was presented in uh, Onwards 2013, and it was uh, part of the Graal VM. So in a sense, it was Truffle. It was um, a work that demonstrated that uh, multiple programming languages, they can uh, have uh, uh, interoperability. So some parts they can work between different programming languages. And also it demonstrated how uh, programmers, they can create their own programming language on top of, of Truffle and leverage a JIT compiler like RAL to optimize the code for uh, CPUs. However, this is uh, the way that all the programming languages are working on top of a CPU. So the JVM abstracts execution on top of the, the CPU. And then is uh, what we are doing in our lab, which is to enhance the JVM, Graal VM, or other JVM distributions for hardware acceleration. So in fact, we have a Tornado VM, which is an open source uh, software plugin to the JVM that uh, unlocks uh, hardware acceleration. We take Java bytecodes, and we specialize the bytecodes. In fact, our compiler, it is a superset of uh, the Graal compiler. And uh, we emit code based on three different backends. It can have uh, the PTX assembly, which is the assembly for uh, NVIDIA GPUs. It can be OpenCL, which is uh, portable across different devices, although the performance is not portable for the same code if you run different devices. And uh, lately, we have also Spear V, which is a binary format. But uh, the problem, I mean, as you see the picture here, Tornado VM can work with a cross interoperability uh, of uh, Truffle, but the Tornado VM can only compile Java. This means that a Python program can use Truffle to enter the code that can run on the GPU, but this code, the part that will be accelerated, has to be written in Java. And the problem it is that the executed, the generated code will only be executed through the JVM. So this is the system that was the motivation of the work that will, I will present you uh, today. So let's have a discussion regarding the challenges that uh, hinder this uh, um, behavior. So there are four uh, spots that uh, we have uh, found, we have identified. The first regards the memory management, the way that we were handling memory management in Tornado VM. The second one uh, regards the, the way that Java uh, stores data and objects. And then it is uh, the replacement, uh, which is a replacement happened inside the compiler at compile time. And finally, it is the, the signature of the generated kernels that was emitted by Tornado VM. We will discuss each point se separately, so don't be scared. So here is the first one, the memory management. Uh, on the left side, I show you a, a block diagram of uh, what's happening. So we have the execution engine, we have the memory management, we're using the garbage collector of uh, the JVM. At runtime, we have the JVM heap, where we have uh, all the objects of uh, the application. And then what we were doing, I have put here 
that uh, this was the layout from uh, um, any release before the 014 of Tornado VM. What we were doing, it was to create a replica of the JVM heap and uh, copy it on the DDR, on the DRAM, on the GPU. So this meant that the whole layout, it is exactly the same. And this means that the way that a kernel on the GPU was accessing the data, it was similarly to what it was happening in the JVM. So you have the object header, you have to uh, add an offset in order to access uh, the exact uh, data that exists in an array, for example, because the arrays are handled as objects. And um, on the right side, you can see also the kernel that was generated, which has some, uh, uh, if you see, it has the, the heap base uh, pointer and the heap base, which is uh, the underscore heap base, which is the frame. And then we were getting the exact address of the heap that uh, where the data would uh, start. So in this example, we have, let's say, three uh, inputs. It was a three input uh, a kernel. And uh, we were generating this uh, underscore frame three, four, and five, because we knew that on the three, four, and five uh, elements, we would have the actual uh, inputs of uh, the input of the kernel. I know that this is confusing, but the, point, the problem is that uh, for that particular reason, we were breaking the portability. Now, regarding the second uh, aspect, it is the accessing of the object's header. So we're using uh, compressed ops. They were disabled, sorry. So that means that uh, we had uh, 24 bytes of the object header. And on the right hand, uh, on the right side, we, we can see a snippet of the OpenCL that is generated by Tornado VM. And as we see, we were uh, creating an offset for the 24 uh, bytes. So we had the object base, which is the pointer to the uh, heap, in a sense, to the, to the particular object on the heap. Then we have uh, the address, which was uh, adding the offset of the 24 bytes and was pointing directly to the data. And then if we wanted to have access to the array length, because in Java we have the array dot length, then it was possible to, to have it, to retrieve it, because we had the object header by adding the 16 bytes. So it was object based plus 16, and we're getting the array length. However, this is a functionality that doesn't exist on other languages, for example, C. Now, the next part it is regarding uh, the replacement of uh, some arguments that we were passing. And uh, because of the compile time, the argument was static. It was uh, replaced uh, by constant uh, replacement in the GAL compiler. And this was um, um, something that would trigger a compilation. So if we were changing the size, the input size, to have a different value, then we would have to recompile uh, a new kernel for the new uh, data size. And this is something that can break uh, the parameterization. And the last part uh, regards the signature of the generated kernels. So this is uh, from uh, version 014 and onwards. Uh, we have some, um, if you see on the right side, we have the kernel of vector addition, and it has uh, eight uh, parameters. The first four are Tornado VM specific parameters. So the first one, the kernel context, it is a pointer that is used uh, specifically to store information about the grid, which is the layout that will be deployed on the GPU, and uh, the number of the threads that will be deployed by a kernel. The second one uh, regards some um, uh, allocated memory. It is called constant memory, which is part of the global memory of the DDR, but it is used only for uh, read-only data. And uh, the third one is the local region, which is a pointer to a memory region that would be accessed for uh, local uh, data accesses. So by threads that are belong to the same work loop. And the final one is uh, the atomics, which is a, a memory space that is reserved for atomic operations. All these four um, parameters are to VM specific, which means that the, the kernel cannot 
automatically be transferable on different programming languages and runtimes. The rest of the four uh, parameters are the parameters of uh, the equivalent Java uh, method for the vector addition. And uh, what we are working is a new mode in Terminator of the M, the code interoperability mode, which in a sense uh, facilitates this. So if we see this figure on the, on the left side, we have Java, the Java application. It uh, uses the API call to pass the bytecode to Tornado VM. Tornado VM will perform the JIT compilation, and the JIT compilation will produce OpenCL, for example, in this case. And the OpenCL, if it is uh, used on the left side in the conventional Java mode, it will be executable only through the JVM and Tornado VM. But with the code interoperability mode, as we saw in the right side, it can be used, this kernel, also by other programming languages like Python, C++, and the rest. So this shows that it is a way that we can use Java for prototyping parallel and computed code, or heterogeneous code, as we call it. And the way that we do it, what it has inside in the code interoperability mode, it is that we have addressed the four challenges that we talked before. So the first one, because the memory management. So as we see here from a single device heap that was a replica of the JVM heap, we went to a different model that allocates a different um, buffer uh, internally on the uh, GPU memory, which is dedicated to the input parameters. Um, this also enabled us to overcome a limitation that we had because in OpenCL, the maximum allocation that you can have, it is the uh, one fourth of the total uh, memory capacity that you have on the GPU. So by uh, allocating different segments per input size, we had the freedom to allocate more space for the inputs. Okay, here uh, I have a snippet for, uh, that shows the difference between the two modes. In a sense, on the left side, we can see uh, the kernel of uh, vector addition that was uh, created at, from uh, 0 14 uh, without code interoperability mode. And as we see, it is the, the kernel that has in the signature the eight uh, parameters. And on the right side, it has the, the kernel that is transferable to other programming languages and uh, runtimes, uh, which has uh, the four um, parameters as they are also in the functional equivalent Java code. As we see here, we have uh, ABC, which are the three uh, arrays. Uh, we have the size also. And as we see, the, the size is not replaced anymore anymore by 1024, which was the, the value that we had during the uh, compilation time. Um, and uh, also we have uh, skipped the header offset, as we see in line uh, 12, which was the 24 uh, bytes that were added, which was uh, done by uh, enhancing the compiler, the graph compiler, so we had um, to um, uh, customize the face in the GRAL compiler to do that. And um, yeah, this is the result uh, kernel. Then uh, we have some preliminary results. We haven't uh, uh, investigated thoroughly the benchmarking of uh, our uh, tool set, uh, but it has shown that uh, we have achieved up to 18% performance improvement for uh, a digital Fourier transform um, application. Uh, with the uh, 16K uh, uh, array size of the input. And um, we are looking forward to, to get more uh, performance, but this performance will be based on two parts. The first one is that uh, the code size is reduced because uh, we don't uh, generate the code that uh, would uh, increase the offset. It would add the offset for every uh, memory access. And uh, the second one is that it is that uh, the data uh, 
we are foreseeing, we foresee to, to see them uh, be coalesced in memory. So this may result in a better uh, uh, locality. So in summary, um, today we analyze the challenges that uh, block portability of uh, the generated code of uh, Tornado VM. And uh, we presented uh, a code interoperability mode, which is a complementary mode to Tornado VM in order to unlock the interoperability with other uh, programming languages. And this uh, has been used to showcase that Java as a language and the JVM as a platform can be used to prototype heterogeneous code. This, uh, this work is not upstream yet in Tornado VM. However, we will uh, release it soon. And uh, this work is uh, supported by many European grants, and it is at the core of uh, several of these grants. For example, in Elegant, it is a European project where Tornado VM is used as an acceleration service to create code that can be used as a service on uh, a, a large system that it is uh, distributed in this uh, C++ based. And then we have uh, Encrypt, which is another project where Tornado VM is used uh, to accelerate uh, fully homomorphic encryption functionality and uh, differential privacy and uh, the rest of the, the projects. Mm -hmm.